Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Last time on Nomad Handcrafted we made a cool little center punch. It was a fun little project as I find myself slipping deeper into this learning how to machine things spiral. But something's kept me up at night since then as I didn't have much luck making my own springs. So today I'm shooting for redemption. We're going to be figuring out these springy little buggers and might even make a little spring loaded tap follower with its own custom made spring. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. To give myself the best shot I can at actually making a successful spring, I'm going to be starting off with a little wire feeder. This is not an original idea. I have definitely taken the principle and basic idea from this little tool from a This Old Tony video. Thanks Tony. Here's are several steps up on mine, but the basic idea really made sense to me. I'll start by squaring up a piece of 16mm bar stock. I don't think I need this to be super square, but I do have some rough measurements that I'm trying to work to, so having it a little bit square should help. Then I'll mill a pocket into the piece. Again, I don't think this needs to be really close to a dimension, but it needs to be tall enough for me to be able to get my fingers in there and have enough room for us to make a little brake pad. The depth is the same, just deep enough to be able to fit my fat fingers in there. I'm thinking somewhere around 10mm deep and 16mm high should do the trick. Now I can stand the part up on its end and start making a hole for the wire to feed through. I've set this one close to the bottom of the channel we made earlier, but just sitting up enough that the wire will have to travel a little uphill to make its way through. Then I'll tap it and I can screw in a spare big tip. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. The wire will slip through the body and out through the tip. The tips I have around here are all smaller than the wire that I'm planning to use for the springs. So I'll drill them out a little so the wire can feed through. And yep, that's a snap drill bit. I know these bits are small, but I did snap three drill bits before I managed to get one to blow all the way through. They did not like me at all. Then I can flip it on its side and drill a hole in from the top. This one's going to be for the screw that's going to hold the brake in place, so it's the same deal as a tip. I look at the tapping function on my mill all the time, and I've never tried it, so let's have a go at power tapping. I'm still struggling along with my cheapo crap taps, but I have a spare one of this one, and yep, I have bought multiple cheap ones that probably cost more than just buying a good one. Oh, you cheap bastard! This is an investment, man! And as soon as the chip formed, it grabbed, pulled itself out of the collet, and jammed. Power tapping! It didn't seem to mess up the hole too bad, but that tap is toast. So I think I'll just go back to hand tapping so I don't stuff up the whole part. Hand tapping. For the little brake shoe, I've got a little slice of brass. And I'm just going to peck a little dimple into the top so the base of the bolt has somewhere to sit, and hopefully keep it in place while the wire slips through. but it's way too wide. So I'll hold it in place and scribe a line to the right depth and whiz off the excess with a grinder. So now I basically have all the parts to make this thing work. I couldn't help myself but to make a little brass knob as a set screw. Probably unnecessary, but I guess you could say that about the whole part of this project. To finish this one off, I weld on another piece of 16mm bar stock at the back at 90 degrees, so I have a way to clamp it in the tool post. I should really learn to TIG. It's on my list, but MIG is going to have to do for today. The cleanup was rugged, but it's on there now. With a little trip to the grinder to grind off some excess and give the faces a bit better finish, I'll call this one done and see if it works. So the idea of this is that 
It might even help if I turn it so you can see it. Is that I'll feed the wire in along the bottom of the slot and then push it through the tip. Then put on the little brake and gently apply a little force with the screw. Without anything holding the spring down, the wire will want to go mad and whip everywhere. But having light pressure should help keep tension on the wire as we wind it, hopefully making the pitch really even and keeping it snug on the arbor. Well, hopefully that's what happens. I don't have a spring here I'm trying to replicate. And something I did learn on the last project is that the amount that the spring pops out after it's wound is a lot more than I thought it would be. But using a calculator should help. This site was super helpful. In the calculator section, it has a spring winding mandrel calculator. So it's in metric and our outer diameter we're shooting for is 9.8 millimeters. Wire diameter, one mil, closed and ground, three and a half mil for the pitch and 20 coils should give us something between 70 and 75 mil in length. Perfect. And this is the number we care about the most, the winding arbor diameter. It's saying that to account for the spring back, we'll need to coil the spring wire around a 6.48 millimeter arbor for it to be 9.8 millimeter final size when we break it free from the tension. It also tells me roughly how much wire I should need and how strong it will be. But another interesting number is the compressed spring height. We need to be able to compress the spring as much as we need, but if it bottoms out, it's going to limit the range of our movement. 21 mil will give me more than enough room for what I have in mind. Enough theory, let's see if we can get all this to work. A lot of boring math later. So I have a little arbor made. It's down to the target diameter, but the stick out was scaring me. I've already killed my dead center today and I don't really have any means of end support for a few days. It's got a little hole drilled through to get the wire started. So I'll poke it through and make the first couple of turns by hand. I know I should turn this whole spring by hand, but after spending all the time changing around the gears on my lathe to get just the right pitch, I couldn't help myself. In low gear with the half nut engaged, I'll let it run until just before my little mark and wind on a couple of closed loops to hold it all together. And, ugh, I don't think I wound enough closed loops into this one. The end of the spring flared out past our target at 9.8mm, so let's have another go at that. Same setup and let's see how we go. Down to the end with a few extra closed loops this time and... Ah! Why did it kick sideways like that? I think my arbor is a pinch short, but after a little check, this spring actually hit spec for diameter and length. Winning's winning. So I'll grind down the end to close the loops and I can knock out the rest of the parts for this thing. So the rest of the parts are pretty straightforward. I'll chuck up some 20 mil round mild steel and face off the end. Then center drill for a little support and take the bar down to diameter. I do have the center here as I made most of these parts before the spring, but give it a minute, it won't last forever. Then I'll turn down a little feature on the end. A spring-loaded tap follower isn't something that usually has a lot of features, but I'm thinking that if I machine a little riser area down near the end, it will give a solid positive stop if it ever slips too far inside a chuck or something like that. And there goes the dead center. I'm definitely not treating it right. It's been spinning too fast for too long. I do have a live center on the way, but from here on out, we have no end support. So I'm just going nice and slow to try and combat excessive deflection and the heavier material removal is already done. So we should make it as long as I don't scrap the part. A quick chamfer on the end, and we can drill the relief for the spring-loaded pin to poke through. I 
I'll start off with a smaller drill and plunge it just deep enough to hold the shoulders of the sliding pin. That hole was slow. I had to drill all the way through the body leaving about 8mm material at the end to keep the pin captive. Then part it off, flip it in the chuck and drill through with the larger bit from the other end. Luckily, it didn't seem to walk about. I just took it really slow, pecked out a little, and kept clearing the chips. Then I'll run a reamer through and oversize the end of the tube for a thread. I didn't want to take the bore to the larger M12 thread diameter. I was worried about my captive spring binding up on the threads but if they're only the depth of the blind captive bolt, there shouldn't be any thread for the spring to grab. Then a quick tap, and this one can go to the side. For the bolt that's going to hold this all together, I'll just turn down a bolt head to be smaller than the body diameter so it doesn't fail on anything in use, and then add a little bit of taper to the end to make it feel nice in the hand. and then back over to the mill in a collet block to machine some flats for a spanner. And this little guy can go over with the rest of the parts. Now for the last part, the follower part of the tap follower. I want to harden this part, and the only hardenable steel I have around is some medium carbon 1045. It's probably not ideal, but it's what I have, so it'll have to do. And as you can see, I've already turned most of the diameter into chips, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. The little nook in the end of my taps is a 60 degree taper, so I'm matching that here. I still have my extreme stick out issue, but nibbling away nice and slow is getting the job done. I'm thinking I should have a fair margin for error out here, so that should work. Then I can turn down the body of the pin until it fits nicely into the end of the body. Set the diameter ahead and part this one off. I won't be hardening this one in the video, but I will be before it gets much heavy use. Then the final touches. A quick chamfer to help the pin slide as easily as possible. And all the machining is done. Putting this one together is really straightforward. All I need to do is simply slide the pin inside the main body Drop in the spring and lock it all down with our bolt. And there we have it, our spring loaded tap follower. That has made tapping so much easier. The spring tension is a little on the heavy side, but it does a great job of holding everything firmly in line when turning the tap handle. I love working through these projects and figuring out things along the way. 
I hope to build every video into something new and continue to grow. Hit that subscribe button if you're along for the ride. Thanks for watching the video everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. See you on the next one!